everybody. Uh, an important lecture today. An important lecture today. We're going to be talking about chapter six, uh, and we're going to be talking about inventory methods. Uh, more specifically, we're going to be talking about something called the FIFO method and the LIFO method. So that's an important uh, lecture today. Might even be a lecture you want to watch uh, more than once uh, if you are still a little confused about it at the end. But let's not hesitate. Let's go right in and go over the homework that I assigned for today real quick. Okay? Um, I assigned Quick Study 610. So let's go ahead and go to Quick Study 610 on page 256 in your books. Okay? All right, Quick Study 610. If you can turn to that. Crafts Galore, a distributor of handmade gifts, operates out of owner Jenny Finn's house. At the end of the current period, Jenny reports that she has 1,500 units or products in her basement, 30 of which were damaged by water and cannot be sold. She also has another 250 units in her van ready to deliver per a customer order, terms FOB destination, and another 70 units out on consignment to a friend who owns a retail store. How many units should Jenny include in her company's period end inventory? Okay. Um, anybody get an answer here? What'd you get? 1790. Very good, Kara. 1790 is the answer. Let's see how that was reached. Okay. Well, you include, you include, you start with, I should say, the 1,500 units in the ending inventory, right? But then you have to deduct the 30 damaged and unsaleable units, correct? We include the units in transit, right? And we include those because it specifically says they were term, they were being shipped to a customer, but it was free on board destination. So we, Jenny Finn, was paying for it, right? So if you're paying for the transportation, then you include it in your inventory. It's your inventory. And then we have those 70 units that are on consignment, right? So there's a total of 1790 units that she should include in her ending inventory. Does that make sense? All right. Okay, any questions on that one? If not, let's go right to the next one, which is Quick Study 611. Quick Study 611. Okay? All right. A car dealer acquires a used car for $3,000, terms FOB shipping point. Additional costs in obtaining and offering the car for sale include $150 for transportation in. That's a fancy way of saying delivery. $200 for import duties. Do you know what import duties are? Sometimes those are taxes when you have something shipped from a, outside of your country. $50 for insurance during shipment. $25 for advertising and $250 for sales staff salaries. For computing inventory, what cost is assigned to the used car? On Quick Study 611, did anybody get an answer for an inventory cost? What did you get? Anybody? 36.75? No, it's a little uh, high. 34.25. Close. <laughs> the answer is 3,400. Mm. Now, you don't want to just add up every number that they give you. Because as the explanation says, the $25 advertising cost and the $250 for uh, sales staff salaries, those are not included in the cost of the inventory themselves. The, the cost of inventory itself. Those are going to be part of operating expenses, okay? So they gave you those not to try to trick you, but to try to, so you could differentiate because the costs that we include are the costs that are reasonable and necessary in order to obtain that inventory and get it ready for, sell, for selling. Does that make sense? The sales staff salaries and the advertising, that's something else. Okay, those weren't necessary reasonable costs to get that inventory. Those might be other things that we do, but they're not part of inventory. So the inventory will be in our books at 3400 Make sense? All right, any questions on Quick Study 611? All right, if not, let's go to the last one, 
which is exercise 6-1 on page 257. All right, exercise 6-1. Joe Lee Company has shipped $500 of goods to China Company. And uh, China Company has arranged to sell the goods for Joe Lee. Identify the consignor. Who's the consignor? Joe Lee. Who's the consignee? China Company. Now, which company should include any unsold good as part of, part of its inventory? Joe Lee, the consignor. Okay? All right, does that make sense? Does that whole cons consignment situation make sense? I'll give you another example. Let's say that I noticed that uh, Jessica was going to have a garage sale. She lives across the street. She's my neighbor. Okay? And so I go over and I say, hey, Jessica, you're having a garage sale. And she says, yes. I said, can you do me a favor? I, I have to be gone all day, but I'm trying to sell my lawnmower. If I push my lawnmower over, I'm going to try to sell it for 100 bucks. Can you just include it in your garage sale with all of your stuff? And I said, I'll tell you what. If you sell it, I'll give you five bucks, okay? She says, sure. She says, I'm going to be sitting out here anyway. Go ahead and push your lawnmower over here, okay? That's kind of an example of consignment. I'm the consignor. You're the consignee, Jessica. Now, if I come at the end of the day and you haven't sold that lawnmower, do you own the lawnmower? No. You never owned it, did you? It was always my inventory. It was always my lawnmower. Uh, you were just had it in your driveway to try to sell, okay? So it's always the consignor's inventory. Make sense? Okay. Um, second part of exercise 6-1. At year end, Jolie Company had shipped $850 of merchandise free on board or FOB destination to China Company. Which company should include the 850 of merchandise in transit as part of its year-end inventory? Joe Lee, because it's FOB destination. That means the seller is paying, correct? And Joe Lee is the seller. Okay? Questions on that? Any questions on any of that? All right. Great. Okay. We're going to dive right in then to more chapter 6 lecture, all right? And let's look at, let's kind of look at, uh, to give us a little example of what the situation we're going to be dealing with. Let's look at this example on your board, on the screen. Now, if you have a few seconds, go ahead and do the journal entries for that situation, okay? We know from chapter 5, that there are two journal entries here, okay? But what it says is Chalmers, Inc., a merchandiser, sold three jump drives to a customer on credit at a sales price of $10 each. You know what a jump drive is? They're those little flash drives that you use. Chalmers had purchased the units of product at a cost of $4 each. Okay, the journal entry for Chalmers would be Okay, well, let's make those. And this should be very easy to do because we just did it in Chapter 5. Um, we would debit accounts receivable and credit sales for, let's see, 3 times the sales price, which is 30. Is that correct? All right. Now, we also have another journal entry, though, don't we? We have to debit cost of goods sold and credit merchandise inventory for how much? A total of 12, which is 3 times the cost of $4 each. Okay? So not too hard a situation there, right? Right? That shouldn't be blowing your mind. All right? Okay, now let's look at a situation 2, which is going to be a little different. Try to make the journal entries here. Okay. Go ahead and get. You don't need to roll the music, but just take 30 seconds and try to make these and and make these journal entries. Try to. Okay. Chalmers Inc., a merchandiser, sold three jump drives to a customer on credit at a sales price of $10 each. Okay, that's all the same. 
Chalmers had purchased their stock of jump drives at various per unit costs of $2.75, $3.30, $3.50, $4.00, $4.15 over the last few months. The journal entries for Chalmers would be, okay, well the first journal entry is the same, right? We debit accounts receivable and we credit sales for how much? 30. Okay. Now the second journal entry, we are going to debit cost of goods sold and we're going to credit merchandise inventory for what? We don't know, do we? This is not as clear cut an example is there? Envision a, envision a bin of these jump drives and you as the retailer or merchandiser have just purchased them for various prices and they're just all in there kind of mixed up. You see what I'm saying? It's a little different situation, isn't it? And it's really actually a more realistic situation, isn't it? You guys have purchased gas over the last year, couple years, right? Is the gas always the same price? Well, nor is jump drives when we purchase them as a retailer from the manufacturer, nor are they going to be always the same price. So what do we use as the cost of goods sold in a situation like this? Well, that's one thing we could do. We could average them. What's the other way that we could do it? The highest. Could use, maybe use the highest or the lowest or something. But what we do know is this. It's not as clear cut, is it? We have to make some sort of decision, right? Okay? And really, I want you to understand what decisions we make in regards to what gets booked for cost of goods sold, it's going to affect this second entry, right? The decision we make will affect this entry right here, correct? Cost of goods sold is on the income statement. And so the decision we make for cost of goods sold will affect our net income. Merchandise inventory is on the balance sheet. So the decisions we make for it will determine our balance sheet numbers, total assets, right? So this is going to affect, this decision as far as what number goes in that question mark, it's a very important decision. Does that make sense? Okay. Well, we're going to talk about that today. Okay. We're going to talk about that today, okay? And suffice it to say, prices change. Our costs change over time. Now, in all our examples that we had in Chapter 5, we always just gave you the cost, right? Like Situation 1, right? Now we're going to start saying, well, how do we figure cost of goods sold? How do we figure the amount of uh, inventory that's left, okay? Now, the two methods we're going to talk about today We're going to talk about two methods today, and those methods are going to be called FIFO, and the second method is called LIFO, okay? Now, do you know what FIFO and LIFO stand for? What does FIFO stand for? First in, first out. First in, first out. Okay? And when we say out, what do we mean? Out, out the door with the customer. Sold. So when we say first, if we, if we assume a FIFO method, first in, first out, then we're going to say the earliest purchases, the first ones we purchased, are the ones we assume were the, were the cost of the, of the ones sold. Okay? Does that make sense? Well, what does LIFO stand for? Last in, first out. If we use the last in, first out method, we're going to say our most recent purchases are the ones we assume are out the door with the customer being sold. Okay, so there's the FIFO method and there's the LIFO method. Okay, now this is not in your books, what I'm going to tell you, but I ac actually like to expand these a little bit. Okay, I like to not just call this FIFO, but I like to call this FIFO Lish and LIFO 
Fish. Sounds like a Dr. Seuss book, book doesn't it? Okay. FIFO, lish, and lifo, fish. Now, what does this stand for? First in, first out. Last in, still here. In ending inventory. That's what that stands for. Last in, first out. But the first in is still here. In ending inventory. Does that make sense? So this, this expanded, these expanded titles look at both sides. What's out the door through cost of goods sold and what is still here in ending inventory. Does that make sense? Now I'm not going to always, I'm not going to call it the FIFO Lish and the LIFO Fish methods. I'm just going to be referring to it as the FIFO method and the LIFO method. But know that when I call it the FIFO method, if you want to think in your head, it's, it's actually the FIFO Lish method. And when I say the LIFO method, it's actually the LIFO Fish method. But you'll just see FIFO and LIFO, especially in your books. Make sense? First in, first out, last in, still here. Last in, first out, but the first in is still here. We have to choose a method and presume that for calculating cost of goods sold and thus for ending inventory, what is still here. Make sense? Okay. Now, we're going to switch over. We are going to switch over to my wonderful animation. Okay. Now, we're going to do that in a second. You, you can come back off that. Okay. Now, we're going to talk about the FIFO method and the LIFO method today. Um, and what I have found is, as elementary as, as what I'm going to use today, I found over the years that this is the best way to present this method. Okay. It's the best way to teach this method is the, the goofy animation I'm going to do okay, or attempt to do. Now, I will also tell you, some students pick this up very quickly. Okay, They understand it. Boom, I got it. Others, it takes a little longer for the light bulb to go on. Okay, So if you are a student where it comes to you very quickly, awesome. Please be patient. I want to get as many people on the bus as I can. Make sense? Okay. So it may come to you very fast. It may need, may need a little, uh, may need to germinate in your brain a little bit. Okay. All right. Let's say that we have a retail showroom. Okay. And you guys here that are face to face, you let me know if there's ever something that I'm showing up here that's not on the screen. Okay. Okay. This is a merchandiser. And this is a. Uh, this is their retail showroom, okay? So this is just where they put their product for people to come sell, okay? And they only sell one type of product, and I'm going to represent that product by little orange blocks, okay? They may be slightly different sizes, but let's just say that they are the same product, okay? It's because I'm not very good with my scissors, okay? So here they have two products to sell, okay? Now I'm going to make it easier for you, and I'm going to say that we are stocking our showroom for our customer and we purchase three items for sale and I'm going to go ahead and write the cost of them on the item for use of our illustration. So we have three items for sale. Our cost is ten dollars each. Are you with me? Now we sell these, let's say, for a sales price of $50, but this is our cost. You with me? So what is our inventory worth right now at this point? $30, 3 times 10, $30, correct? Okay, a little bit of time goes by, and we purchase five more of these same items, the exact same items, from our manufacturer, but there, our cost has gone up a little bit. So we purchase five more of these items and we stack them right next to them, but the cost has gone up to $12 per item. Are you with me? So now we have a total of eight items for sale. You with me? We have three at the $10 cost, five at the $12 cost. What's our total inventory at this point? How much? 
ninety dollars. And I always kind of think of it as layers. Three times ten is thirty. Five times twelve is sixty. Sixty plus thirty equals ninety. You with me? Okay, a little bit more time goes by and we purchase two more of these items that we'll sell to our customers. But the price has gone up a little bit more. It's gone up to thirteen. Okay? You with me? So our retail showroom's getting pretty pretty uh, crowded, isn't it? Now keep in mind, guys, these are all the same items. Yes, they have different costs on them, and I represented that by writing the number. But when the customer comes in, these are all the same product. You see what I'm saying? Okay, well, let's talk first about the FIFO method. Okay, let's talk about the FIFO method. And let's say our customer comes in. Okay, here he comes. Isn't this, this is like Avatar animation, isn't it? Like Pixar. Okay, so our customer comes in and we are going to presume the FIFO method. Now, what does FIFO stand for? First in, first out. First in is the first out the door with the customer. So under this method, if we presume the FIFO method, and this customer here purchases four items, which ones are we going to presume under the FIFO method are sold to this customer? Yes. These were the first that we purchased, right? So the first in, first out. So these three, we'll presume that our customer bought these three. And then we have to dip into this layer, don't we? And we have to take one of those for our customer. Cool? Now before our customer walks and leaves, wait, come back, guy. OK, come back. What is the cost of goods sold in this situation? 42. 12 plus 10 plus 10 plus 10. 42 is the cost of goods sold. Now this is first in, first out. Those earliest ones are out the door with the customer. But the last in are still here, right? The last in are still here. Now what is the value of our ending inventory of still here? Well, it's 2 times 13, which is 26. 4 times 12, which is 48. I think that equals 74. Is that correct? Does that make sense? So under the FIFO method, when this guy purchased four items, the first in were the first out the door with him, $42 cost, and the last in is still here in an inventory, it adds up to 74. Now nowhere in this example, do you remember what the sales price I told you was? 50. Does the 50 show up anywhere here? No, it doesn't. Because this is cost of goods sold, not sales price of what was goods sold, but cost of goods sold. You with me? Okay. Any questions on that? Any questions on that? Okay. Now, let me show you how that would look on an inventory sheet. Okay, let me show you how that would look on an inventory sheet. Okay, we're going to come back to this in a little bit. Now, here is an inventory sheet. Take a look at the... Can you see that up there, folks? Okay, now I will tell you, one of the biggest challenges I have as an instructor, to come off this for a second, one of the biggest challenges I have an as an instructor in this sort of format is this is the class period I wish I had big whiteboards, okay? And I could write on the whiteboards, right? Anybody here taking a math class? There's whiteboards all over the classroom, aren't they? And the instructor, he or she, will just write all over them, right? Well, imagine if your, imagine if your math instructor had a whiteboard that was this big. It'd be pretty hard, right? But in this scenario, that's kind of what I'm dealing with. I really only have the Elmo, right? I have whatever can fit on the screen, correct? So be patient with me, uh, but I, 
th that's kind of why I have to do some of these methods, okay? All right. Okay. Now, we just looked at that, that uh, LIFO, oh, I'm sorry, that FIFO situation, okay? We just worked with that FIFO situation. Now, this is called an inventory flow worksheet, okay? And folks at home, uh, you have these in your, in your handouts under Chapter 6. I have some of these for you, okay? You folks here in class, I'll hand those out to you. And actually, even on the test, you're going to have these, okay? But I want to show you how we illustrate on the worksheet what we just did. Now, first of all, I like to write what we did. This is the class example. And this is the FIFO method, correct? You with me? All right. Well, the first thing that we did is we purchased three of these at $10 each for $30, right? And so what was our inventory balance at that point? Well, it was the three at 10 for $30. You with me? Okay. A little bit of time went by and we purchased five more at $12 for 60, correct? So what was our inventory balance when that was done? Well, we still had the three at the $10 for 30, but now we also had the five at 12 for 60, correct? So our inventory balance at this point was 90. Make sense? Okay, a little bit of time went by and we purchased two more at 13 for 26 purchase, correct? Well, what's our inventory at that point? Well, we still have the three at 10 for 30 and the five at 12 for 60. But now we also have the two at 13 for 26. Okay, now at this point, what was our inventory? What was it? 116. Okay. Now we make a sale, right? And how many units did we sell to that customer? We sold four items. Okay. Now we're, we're presuming the FIFO method here, right? The FIFO method. So the first in is the first out the door. So when they purchase four units, we're going to presume, this was the earliest layer here, we're going to presume we sold three of the $10 ones at 30 and one of the $12 ones, correct? For 12. Now remember, we are dealing here with cost of goods sold. Cost of goods sold. So Here's the biggest mistake students make. They'll say, we sold four at $50. No, this is not sales price of what was goods sold. This is cost of goods sold. Does that make sense? So what was our cost of goods sold in that example? It was 42, okay? Now after this, what is our inventory balance? Well, we sold these three tins, right? So we don't have any of those left. How many of the $12 items do we have left? Four. We sold one, so we have four of the $12 ones. Four times 12 is 48. And how many of the 13s do we have left? Two of them, both of them. So our ending inventory at that point was 74. Does that make sense? Now that is the way that you utilize the uh, inventory flow sheets. Now normally, I didn't give you dates, but normally the dates would go over here. Now here's how I don't want you to do this. Do you notice how I left some blank space between the dates and the layers? Don't do this. See how this is all kind of crammed up together? You see what I'm saying? It's like the student's afraid they're going to run out of room, so they're just starting right at the next line. No, don't do that. When you fill out these, 
leave some blank space. Does that make sense? And you're going to see each, each day or each date the layers a lot more readily. Okay? Make sense? So leave some space. You got plenty of space, folks. Okay? All right. That was the FIFO example we did in class. Now let's go back to our little example. Okay? All right. Let me reconstruct this situation. Okay, here's our retail showroom, right? We purchased three of the three items at a cost of ten dollars, right? A little time goes by. We purchased five more of the same item, but the cost is now twelve dollars each. Right? A little time goes by and we purchased two more items but the cost is now 13 each, right? What is our inventory at this point? Well, we have three of the tens at thirty dollars, five of the twelves at a total of sixty dollars, two of the thirteens at twenty six dollars, so our total inventory at this point would be $116 worth of inventory. Agreed? Okay. Now, we previously talked about the FIFO method. Now we're going to talk about the LIFO method. And remember what LIFO stands for? The last in is the first out. The most recent purchases are the ones that are out the door with the customer. So in this situation, Mr. Customer comes in. And which ones under the LIFO method are we going to presume he purchases for? Which ones are we going to presume that this customer purchases? Last in, first out. Well, what were the latest purchases? These. And then we have to dip into this layer, right? So we're going to presume that's the cost of what was sold. Now, what is the cost of goods sold under the LIFO example? 50. 12 plus 12 plus 13 plus 13 is 50. <coughs> now it was only 42 last time, right? So it makes a difference which method you, with which method you choose. Correct? Okay. So our customer leaves out the door. What is our last in first out went out the door, but the first in is still here. So what is our ending inventory at this point? It is 30 plus 36 equals 66. Does that make sense? Cool. It's the LIFO method. Now, if you were, um, If you were keeping track of this on your inventory sheet, right here, excuse me while I move all this junk. If we were keeping track of this, now let's do the LIFO method. Now I'm, I'm kind of being lazy, and I'm instead of starting a new one, I'm just using the old one because of time. Well. Up until this point, it's all the same, right? We purchased this layer, then some time went by and we purchased that layer, that's our ending inventory. We purchased this layer, now that's our, in, in, our inventory, right? Now we're going to use the LIFO method, okay? And when we sell four, we're going to say we sold two of the 13s at 26 and we had to sell two of the twelves, correct? At twenty-four. So our cost of goods sold is fifty dollars. Okay? For those four items in total. What do we have still in our ending inventory? Well, we still have the three ten dollar items, correct? And how many of the twelve dollar items do we have? 
three, 5 minus 2 equals 3. We don't have any of the 13's, do we? So our ending inventory at this point is $66. And is that what we came up, up with when we did it manually? I believe so. So do you see how this relates to my little animation guy? Cool. Now what I want you to do is I have given everybody an inventory worksheet handout. Okay, looks like this. Looks like this. Let me put it on the Elmo. Again, for you folks, it's always in the lessons tab under the appropriate chapter for the handouts. Okay, so it's going to probably look a little bit like this. What I want you to do, folks, is turn it open and I want you to do the SpongeBob example. Okay, I want you to do the SpongeBob example. Okay, now. What I would do is just, they didn't actually print this right in the document services, but that's okay, um, is take a look at this and do it over here, all right? You've got some of these blank sheets and just have some of those always readily available, okay? And uh, in the back or whatever, okay? And so just rip one of those off and do SpongeBob. First do it for FIFO and then do it for LIFO. We're going to take at least 10 minutes and I want you to work through that. Does everybody know what we're doing? Okay, let's work through it. Play that music.
if you're not done, folks at home, just push on pause and start when you're done. Um, first of all, here are the answers, okay? Now we're going to go through the detail here in a second. Those are the answers. Any other numbers and any other blank is wrong, okay? Any other numbers and any other blank is wrong, okay? So for FIFO, cost of goods sold in ending inventory, 103 and 81. For LIFO, it's 117 and 67 for cost of goods sold in ending inventory. You with me? Now when you do these, always, always, um, you know, have that, have that inventory sheet to the side as you're working on it. But label which one you're working on so that later on when you're studying for the test or whatever, label it or write up there somewhere which example you're working on, like SpongeBob FIFO. Okay? I'm going to actually show you the answers on the screen because I on the computer because I think it'll be a little easier. Okay? So this is SpongeBob for FIFO. Okay? Uh, on April 1st, we have beginning inventory of 5 at 8 for 40. So that's our inventory balance as well, right? April 7th, we purchased 9 more, but the cost has gone up to $9 for 81. Thus, this is our inventory balance after that transaction, correct? Some time goes by. We purchased 6 more. The price has gone up to $10.50. Um, $63 purchase there, and here is our inventory balance, correct? Okay. Now, now comes the point where we sell some items, right? We sell 12 items, right? Now, again, a lot of students will say 12 at 29 selling price. No. This is cost of goods sold, right? So if we are using the first in, first out method, when we make that sale, these were the first in, so we'll say we sold those five. We sold a total of 12, so then we have to dip into this layer, right? Seven of those nine, okay? So what's our, in, that, that's our cost of goods sold, right? Our cost of goods sold. What do we have left in our inventory? Well, we sold this entire layer. Of this layer, we have 9 minus 7 equals 2 of the $9 left at 18 cost. And we have 6 of the 1050 at 63. Our inventory balance is 81. Make sense? That's for the FIFO method. Now, for the LIFO method, th this part all stays the same, doesn't it? for the LIFO method. It's not until we make a sale. With the last in first out method, we're going to say our most recent purchases are the ones that go out the door. So when we sell 12 units, again, this is not 29 because this is cost of goods sold. We say we sold six of those 1050. That was the, the, latest, the last that were purchased, right? The most recent. And then we have to, of this layer, we have to dip in and take six of those. So we have our total 12 that were purchased. So our cost of goods sold at this point is 117. Correct? Well, what do we have left? Well, we still have our five at eight for 40. How many of those nine dollar ones do we have left? We had nine. We sold six. Now we have three. And then this layer is all out the door with the customer, correct? So here is our inventory balance under LIFO. Is that what you all got? Now, I'm going to give you these inventory sheets on the test, and you can use them. You don't have to use them. If you're just some sort of brainiac rain man, and you can just juggle it around your brain and give me those numbers, that's fine. I, on this test, you want to double check your work, because if you have the right number, you get the credit. If you don't, you don't. I'm not going to go through your inventory sheets and try to figure out where you went wrong. It's all or nothing, baby, okay? Now, here's what I want you to do for homework. Any questions, let me ask first, okay? Here's what I want you to do for homework. Okay, we did SpongeBob in class, right? Okay, turn the page. I want you to do the entire BB's boating example, both for FIFO and for LIFO. In each, in each situation, just get one of those inventory sheets and utilize it, okay? All right. 
So uh, do BBs, boating example, the whole thing. Do not, do not do ABC weighted average. We haven't learned weighted average. Don't do that one. Do not do that one. And then under new technique, I want you to do just the FIFO and LIFO for new technique. Don't do the other one. Just do FIFO and LIFO for new technique. So in short, I want you to do the entire BBs boating and then do FIFO and LIFO for new technique. You with me? Use those inventory sheets. Okay? Now this is the sort of thing as much as in accounting, folks, you got to do this. You can't just watch me do it. You need to do it or you won't be able to do it on the test, okay? Thanks. Watch this class, watch this lecture again if you're a little fuzzy on this. All right? We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.